well dear children i think you must have listened to the last session what uh, you, about uh, indefinite integration and integration by parts which was the last and final topic of the indefinite integration as soon as you cross over the indefinite integration you come across the definite integrals as your next topic in part 2 then what what exactly you are going to study in definite integrals so far as uh, in uh, indefinite integrals are concerned please remember why they were called indefinite integrals supposing that you take a problem of a function given there this is going to be f of x plus c the c is a decisive factor this value is not known to us in every indefinite integration this is one point which you have to note down the second point is that whenever you integrate a function this integration can be carried out in multiple fashions it is not necessary that you will directly calculate this problem say for example integration sin inverse 2x upon 1 plus x square dx is there this problem either you can directly work out or change this into the tan inverse 2 tan inverse x dx and then apply integration by parts integration by parts and work out but when you follow this direct method you will get some answer and that answer will be different to the answer that you are going to get here so why it is mainly because it is indefinite integral but at the moment what you are going to study is definite integrals definite integral in the sense you are going to see exactly the integration between two limits a and b and the f of x gets integrated and whatever the value that you get say for example f of x that will not carry plus c and you are going to get here it is f of b minus f of a so here i give you a small example supposing that you want to do x dx integration what you write it is x square by 2 plus c but if it is given it is 1 to 2 x dx then what happens it is x square by 2 going from 1 to 2 it is going to be 4 by 2 minus 1 by 2 it is 2 minus half is equal to 3 by 2 don't you think that there is a lot of difference between this value and this value here there is no certainty here as far as the final outcome is concerned but here the end means clearly in the form of a numer the numeral that means the definite integral he is going to give you always a number as an end product so how is it possible now you can see here what i do always uh, i mean what one has to do when the in de definite integral comes whenever you take definite integral after having integrated after having integrated the value that you get the function has to be substituted by the upper limit minus lower limit now what exactly uh, this definite integral geometrically gives us the geometrically it indicates that it is the area bounded by the curve y is equal to f of x this is the y is equal to f of x curve between the ordinates a and b that is the interval for which the curve is constructed now what happens the integration means i have i think you must have already learned from the previous teacher integration means to sum up to sum up that means here what exactly to be sum up summed up here is the area between the curve and the x axis here this is x axis here the area which is covered this area has to be evaluated the area is given by this particular function f of x dx a to b so a definite integral indicates definite integral between two limits two limits indicate indicate area bounded by bounded by the curve curve y is equal to f of x and ordinates 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 uh, that is uh, y is equal to uh, sorry x is equal to a and x is equal to b that means they are parallel lines to the y axis so th this is always taken with respect to x axis why it is with reference to x axis because integration is going with respect to dx that means with reference to x axis only we are carrying out this 
differentiate the integration. So, dear children, what exactly we have understood? Definite integral will always give you a number, number 1. Number 2, what we have understood? Definite integral geometrically explains the area, area bounded by the curve y is equal to f of x and the ordinates a, x is equal to a and x is equal to b with respect to x axis. So, this is exactly we have to understand now in the definite integrals. Well, what is limit of a sum? Integration a to b f of x dx is equal to limit h tends to 0 h into f of a plus f of a plus h plus f of a plus 2 h and so on so forth f of a plus n minus 1 into h this is a value where h is equal to b minus a upon n your textbook formula might differ to the formula which I have written because uh, one thing I would like to tell you this is much easier technique as compared to the textbook technique that is given to you. For example, if I want to evaluate 1 to 2 x dx using the limit of a sum. In fact, I can directly calculate it is x square by 2 and 1 to 2 is going to be uh, 3 by 2 square units because it is representing the area. But I would be getting 3 by 2 even using this formula. How am I going to do that? Here f of x is going to be x. So, f of a that is uh, a is equal to 1. a is equal to 1 means f of 1 is equal to 1. f of a plus h that is f of 1 plus h is going to be 1 plus h. f of a plus 2 h that is going to be f of 1 plus 2 h that is 1 plus 2 h and so on so forth f of a plus n minus 1 into h is equal to 1 plus uh, 1 plus n minus 1 into h. So, I would be directly substituting the value here and before which I can find out even the value of h is equal to b minus a upon n that I can say b is equal to 2, 2 minus 1 upon n that is equal to 1 by n. Once I get this, I will have to make the substitution in the formula. Therefore, integration 1 to 2 x dx is equal to limit h tends to 0 h what is the h value uh, so okay let us let us let it let us be keeping that h as it is h into don't change anything there 1 plus 1 plus h 1 plus 2 h 1 plus 3 h and so on so forth 1 plus n minus 1 into h but dear children you must understand here there are n terms starting with 0 and up to n minus 1 means 0 terms sorry n terms sorry then you will be writing that limit h tends to 0 h into 1 is repeated every term so it is n into 1 is n plus h the second term is if you take h plus 2 h plus 3 h plus and so on n minus 1 into h. I, this all second terms have been taken into one group. Thus resulting here limit h tends to 0 h into n plus it is if you take out h as a common factor it is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on up to n minus 1 that is arithmetic progression arithmetic progression sum of n terms so limit h tends to 0 h into n plus h uh, it is the sum of n terms n into n minus 1 upon 2 so what i will be doing now this h i will send inside limit h tends to 0 you observe very carefully it is n h plus the h is multiplying with h h square here two terms are there in the multiplying form one h will be multiplying here the other one will be multiplying here it is n h into n h minus h one h has multiplied here another h has multiplied here upon two but in this structure if what is one by n is equal to h that means n h is equal to one so i will directly substitute limit h tends to zero that is 1 plus 1 into 1 minus h upon 2 that is putting h is equal to 0 the only term here where h is found that is 1 plus 1 upon 2 is equal to 3 by 2 square units. Dear children here I have got this value directly here I have done this much lengthy procedure to arrive at 3 by 2 you must be definitely thinking that sir why did you go for this long method see it is an imperative aspect as for 
your syllabus is concerned, you have got this particular problem normally given for 4 marks. So, when it is given for 4 marks, though it is a small problem which I have directly carried out here as 3 by 2, nevertheless, you if you are asked, if you are asked to evaluate, say for example, evaluate if he says integration 1 to 2 f of x dx using limit of sum, using limit of sum, then you are not supposed to follow this technique. You have to follow the technique which I have elaboratedly explained here. If you follow this technique, only you will be given 4 marks. Do not directly calculate this. Here, now we will be doing some more problems in the next session. So, please try to understand before you come for the next session, try to have a review of what has been given by me so that what happens your next session becomes easy to carry out. Thank you very much.